How's it going guys? THF here, Bud Amstaff, and today I am going to review my fifth fursuit head, paws, and tail. So this is my second attempt on Bud, the American Staffordshire Terrier, and as you can see, it's much different than, you know, the first attempt, you know, my fourth fursuit head, the one you guys really hate. Now, compared to the previous one, the previous one did not have eyebrows. And this one has floppy ears. I do apologize if the close-up is bad. This is being recorded with my Samsung Galaxy Tab A. It's not a perfect camera. Instead of using, you know, a piece of foam covering it with faux fur for the nose and then just glue it on. I use some different kind of, you know, modeling clay. Not, it's got, it's kind of paper-ish. And then I covered it in black oil-based paint. And I, you know, stitch in between these. I cut a line and I cut another line and then got a piece of black faux fur for the center of the snoot. Now the tongue needs to be replaced. I know it's the tongue is, you know, out of commission. I just didn't know what to actually put inside since I was actually in a hurry to a furry event. But as you can see, but like my fourth one. Now, this one also has duct tape for the mouth, as in it's very smooth and I like working with it. Now, I do not recommend to use duct tape for the inside of the mouth. It's also on the top. Oh, come on, camera. Ugh. Faux fur just keeps, you know, getting out of its place. This thing needs to be frequently brushed. Now, going back to the eyes, as you can see, I have, you know, plastic canvas covered in oil-based paint in two different brown colors. Got light brown, dark brown, then a white center. If you're wondering what this is right here, this is hot glue covered in oil-based paint. It's it's a lot easier than just doing, you know, the other type of eyes that other fursuit makers do. This is just my way. On the top, his hair is much longer. Then you look at the sides, you can see that almost all the front is short, while the rest on the side and back is long. As you can see, traced all the way to the ear, down to the bottom jaw. Same thing on the other side. It's gonna ear down to bottom jaw. Now, let's uh, turn this thing around. All right, now as you can see, hold on, there we go. Uh, he still has his blue hair, and in case you haven't seen, you know, the mullet on my fourth one, that's what my character has. My character has a mullet for hairstyle. I even have it in my drawings, which I have not yet reviewed. Now let's take a look at the inside. So I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. Now the lighting might be terrible, so I do apologize for that. If you take a look inside, I did a lot of different kind of padding. I used a bunch of different, you know, cotton fabrics for comfort. Sometimes it gets kind of itchy. I kind of need to replace the white kind. It's not very good. I have to use tape just to keep the, the ticklish fibers down. This back padding is to help it, you know, tighten the head a bit more so it doesn't, you know, go, doesn't, you know, rock back and forth too much. These are also for, also, you know, making sure it doesn't, you know, move too much to the side, even though technically my nose is can, always is around over here. Technically, my nose is actually in, always goes inside that hole, and, even, and when I move around, the head tries to move. My nose stops it, kind of in a funny way. As you can see, there's the duct tape again. 
And if you're wondering about the tongue, it's... I just used, you know, another piece of black duct tape. And I taped it on. You guys can't see it. Hold up. I know, I'm sorry. I apologize for that bad view. Look, it's on the bottom jaw. Let me, what is up with the focus of this camera? Gosh. Alright, folks. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to review that part because... I don't have a tripod with me, and there's no tripod for tablets around my location. Now, let's just move on to the pause. Now, there we go. Ah, it's too much sunlight. Now, for the pause, it's not perfectly well made. I still need to make another pair of these because these are kind of crappy. Other than that, I this I try to make this bigger, but I ran out of leather. Now it's yeah, this is the center paw, and it's a as you can see it has five fingers. It's not a four finger character. I honestly don't really like those four fingered ones. They're they're not really comfortable to wear. And on every tip of the finger, and the top center tip, the thumb, there's a piece of, you know, black leather uh, glued on. Yeah, these are, the, those pieces are glued on. Same goes for the other one, same exact detail. Now, if I, if I flip this thing around on the top of the paw, as you can see, same length fur when it's been, you know, trimmed. While on the very back, same goes for the other paw, it's been left long. Decided, you know, keep a long strip or a strip of long fur for the back, the top back of the paw. I just thought it'd be nice. And now, finally, the tail. Not perfectly well made. As a matter of fact, I need to replace this with a better kind of belt. This, I'm tired of wearing. However, as you can see, trying to get these pieces on was not easy. But for the tail, as you can see, it's long faux fur. And it started off as a rectangular piece of faux fur. Folded it in half, got to the bottom, cut it in round shape so I could look more round on the bottom. Then I sewed it, the entire piece, together. Then I filled it up with polyester. Then I turned it inside out, filled it up with some fiber, and then trying to sew on this side of the faux fur, right side in, it was not easy attaching these pieces. These pieces were a pain. The belt's still connected. Now the reason why you need a, you know, you should use like a type of belt that, you know, clips on, not, not, never use one of these. These are not comfortable because you have to tighten it and it puts pressure to your waist. Now let me, get, for an example, so you have to connect it, if you're like wearing any kind of pairs of pants, it'd be a lot easier. It's easier to use these because it helps it stay in and you know, it doesn't really get it off balanced if you're not wearing the full fursuit. Like what I did in my previous video. It's, it's a, I always recommend using those. As a matter of fact, you should also do that when you're actually in fursuit. You could buy a pair of shorts with those, you know, belt holes and use that strap belt that clips on and put it around you, put the tail through the fursuit and then it should help keep its balance more accurately. And answering questions, yes, this thing has been, you know, if you guys are wondering what kind of polyester fiber I used, it's the same kind, and fiber pillows and plush toys. Had some of this leftover plush and I was doing some plush surgery when some of my plush toys were just really hard and uncomfortable. Now, let's not get off topic. So, that's pretty much it. Head, paws, tail. Well, that wraps it up for this video, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, this is my way of creativity on fursuit. 
and I'll see you folks next time. THF, Bud Amstaff, out.